Welcome to Business Monday. Now, often one reaches a stage in life when they choose to enter into a partnership. In this case, we're talking a partnership such as marriage, for example, prior to which all financial matters are just about you. But once you enter into a partnership, it becomes about you and your partner and the future. So what exactly changes and what do you now have to start doing differently with regard to your finances? Well, in studio to give us answers is Mr. Maniara Kirago, a personal finance consultant. Hello and welcome. Hi. How are you? Very fine, thank you. All right, so now having entered into that life partnership, how then can couples, let's say, marry their financial goals? First of all, before you enter into that relationship, um, you, you, it's important that you understand the person you're getting involved with. Um, when it comes to your finances, you need to have all the cards on the table, jokers included. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, you, when two people get together, you'll find that each person has got a different money personality, the way they handle money, the way their attitudes towards money, their, what they want to do with that money. Each person is different. Now, when uh, you enter to, into a relationship like that, what you need to do is now discuss those uh, each person's goals and um, and uh, attitudes and come up with um, with something which will either uh, uh, and agree what you two are going to do together. Um, you ha either have to accommodate those differences because there will definitely be differences, and um, maybe give up some such uh, one person may need to give up goals. And the other may need to uh, maybe accept the other person's goals. So you, you discuss this until you come to something that's agreeable between the two of you. And once you do that, then you go ahead and work on that plan which, you, which now belongs to the two of you. It, um, many couples run their lives, financial lives, separately. And that is not very good because you miss out on the synergy that's caused when you work together as a team. So it's important to work together as a team. All right, okay, so before you even get together, sit down and discuss yes. those financial goals. Right, now say, for example, in the first five years of that commitment or partnership, what would you say should come out as priority? Because, of course, uh, before it's just all about you and you have different priorities. Uh, you're focused on your own interests, but now you, you have somebody else with you. What then do you prioritize? For example, home ownership or looking even into the future of saving to educate children. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, first of all, financial planning, whether you're a single person you're, or you're a married person, um, the principles are the, are the same. Basically what you need to do is, first of all, understand your financial position and then set the goals and then manage the income which you're, you're getting so that you achieve the goals. And you also need to invest to achieve the long-term goals. You also need to manage personal risks and then, and then implement those decisions that you have made. Now, when it comes to the family situation, um, for most people, you'll find that uh, they will need to, to, they will probably want to buy a house at some time in the future. Now, a house is a big, big goal because it's, it's a really exp one of the most expensive assets uh, a, a person or an individual or a family with a, will own through their, their lives. So it's not an easy one to achieve. And uh, what one needs to do, or what a couple needs to do, is to set it as a goal and then begin putting money away towards that goal. And uh, don't, uh, don't be too ambitious to try and say, I'll buy a house in six months. For most people, that's not really practical. So you should set, um, an amount, uh, set a, a target date which allows you to be able to save up enough deposit for that while at the same time doing other things. So home ownership is one, play, one, 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 um, one potential goal. Another one is uh, setting up the family home, I mean, putting um, furniture in the house. Probably when you're, when you're getting together, you're probably very young. Right. You probably have nothing to your name, maybe a mattress or so. <laughs> you probably have to um, buy furniture for the house. Um, and uh, that, is, that costs a lot of money. There are various ways to do it. You can either save up for those things, which takes time, right. and most people don't have the patience. Uh, other people go and take a loan and buy the furniture, which is not very advisable because that increases the cost of those things tremendously. So uh, if, you, if you're patient, you can actually build up the money to buy those, that furniture in the house, do it over time, and eventually you, your house will be fully furnished. That's another goal. Another one is children's education. 
once you get into a relationship, probably sooner or later, you begin to multiply. <laughs> right. <laughs> and sometimes at a rate which, uh, which may look too fast for you. Um, now children, people say they're gifts from God. Unfortunately, those gifts come with <laughs> at a price. <laughs> oh, yeah, at a price. And that price can be, can be actually very high. Uh, feeding them, educating them, and all, all those cost a lot of money. But of course, education is the most uh, expensive and also the most important because it gives us children a good start in life, a good foundation for their life. Uh, primary school, secondary school education, those ones, you should try to make sure that you're taking your, your children to schools that you can afford. Looking at your income, you can actually afford to pay the school fees, and also not not only just afford to pay school fees, but also be able to save up money for their higher education, because higher education is is pretty expensive, and uh, in most cases, more expensive than most people can afford from their current income. So you have to accumulate money for that. Too uh, too many people for, uh, ignore this, and then uh, they only think about it when the child is now ready to At go to university. Yes, right, and, and it's too late. It's, it's too late. It's very difficult, and it becomes very stressful for the parents. You'll find that they are forced now to start going borrowing money or selling assets which were meant for something else, and uh, that stress is not necessary. To avoid it, think about it from right from the beginning of getting uh, of getting into the relationship. So that's another goal. So planning is really, really key, isn't it? It is very um, And so I suppose you've got to put aside uh, what at one point you may have considered priorities such as, you know, taking a holiday, relaxing. Um, that you've got to push to the back a bit and then focus on things like buying a car or, as you say, buying a home as well. Well, it really depends on, on uh, your income situation. If you can, um, once you look at all those goals which you want to, to achieve, you will now have to prioritize them and adjust them according to your income. If you can still afford to go on that holiday every year, and, uh, and, but at the same time you're saving for your, house, for your house, you're saving for your children, then it's all right, go ahead and enjoy your life. By the way, financial planning does not mean suffering. A lot of people think that if you're planning your finances, you're not enjoying life. Right. It does not mean that. It means just deciding what is best for you and actually p putting that into practice. Yeah. So if you want a holiday, that could, be an, that could be one of your goals. Another very, very important goal is preparing for retirement. Right. Okay, we will come back to that. Um, let me just ask you, though, would you say there should be a division of roles when it comes to this sort of planning? For example, um, take the female in the relationship uh, deals with all the bills, whereas the man in the relationship uh, looks at investment issues. I mean, just take for example, do you think there should be that division of roles? In the past, it made a lot of sense because um, previously, the, the man in the relationship used to earn a lot more than the woman in the relationship. But that's no longer valid. That no longer applies. So it doesn't have to be that way. But uh, ha having said that, uh, different couples have different ways of handling their finances. And whichever works for them, it's fine. That so many ways to skin that cat. Uh, whichever works for each couple, that is fine. So long as it's agreed and it's workable, that's fine. So it just depends on who perhaps prefers doing what yes, regarding the finances. Got, who, and also who's got the, the talent to do. Because some people are very good at when it comes to investing. Right. Others are very good when it comes to, to, to um, budgeting. Right, so, okay. Yeah. Okay, so work on those skills. How much income do you think a couple uh, should appropriate uh, in savings? The amount of money which a couple saves should be, should be determined by the goals which they want to achieve. Because you're not saving for the sake of saving, you're saving to, to achieve something. Actually, saving and investing are just a means to an end. They're not an end by themselves. So if you want a house uh, in, in three years or five years, and you need to save, X, uh, say, 20,000 shillings per month, you also need to save 5,000 shillings per month for your children. You also need to save a particular amount for another goal. You add, up, uh, add those all up and then find, uh, check in your budget whether you can actually afford that. Mm, most play places you find the advice coming that you should save 10% of your income, but that's just uh, basically for your retirement. You have other goals too, and uh, those ones should be on top of the 10%.
Okay, now here's a big question that a lot of couples uh, consider. To merge or not to merge those bank accounts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, that's a cat that can be skinned so many ways. Uh -huh. It d r depends on the relationship. There are advantages and disadvantages. And what are those advantages and disadvantages? Advantages. If you merge your accounts, should something happen now, uh, suppose to one, one person in the couple, uh, the other one can still operate the account without, without having to go to get the letters of administration and, and so on. Um, disadvantage. One may be a spendthrift <laughs> and uh, go and spend the money which was actually meant for other things and uh, and cause a lot of stress in the family, in the relationship, and that happens quite often. So it, it depends on the couple. If you find that you can work together, as a t uh, you have joint accounts and it works for you, do it. If, if it doesn't work for you, don't look for trouble. What are the ways around this, though? Uh, I've, uh, through research, realized that some couples do have a joint bank account where they spend that sort of money on the shopping for the house or what have you, but then at the same time they still have their individual accounts. A bit of money on the side if uh, one wants to spend on personal things like shopping, for example. Is that one way to get yeah. around it? That's the fact I was about to say that. Uh, one way to get around it is to, merge, to put all the family money into one account. Now this is the one which you're going to be using for the, for the things, for buying uh, household stuff, buying in, your investments. Now that's one in the family kitty. Each person, though, will need money maybe for their to go out, to go buy shoes, to go. Now that can be put. Can be every time the, the salary comes into the main account, then you move each person's allowance, to, to call it an allowance, to their personal account. Now, if you do it that way, it removes a lot of a lot of this uh, stress which 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 comes about because one, pass, one party may not understand why do you need another pair of shoes? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, s because now you're using your own money. It doesn't really it, matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, so that's one way to do it, a, a very good way actually. And uh, talking about investments, should they be undertaken jointly as well? It, uh, it actually depends on which kind of investments. First of all, uh, the retirement plans. For, for retirement, the foundation of retirement money should be the pensions, pension plan or the re registered retirement plan. Now, that one is, is usually for one person. So the, the, the lady in the relationship will be having her own retirement account or pension plan, the, the man the same. But then besides the pension plans, you also need other investments. Because if you depend only on pension for retirement, you're going to be very poor. In fact, you're going to, your standard of living will, will go down because most pension plans will probably give you between 25 to 35 percent of your pre-retirement income. So your standard of living will go down. Right. And in addition to that, to make it even worse, um, then most pensions are not adjusted for inflation. So the longer you go into retirement, the less that money means. So uh, it's important to have the retirement plan, but besides that, you should have other investments. Now, those other investments, um, those ones, they could be each person, they could be joint. For instance, if you're having unit trusts or you're investing in a unit trust, you could have a joint account. Or, or if you're investing in, in business, you, uh, maybe one of, the people, one of the persons in the relationship is one running the business. So probably that might be in that person's name. Um, so it depends on the situation. But the, the, the basic foundational one, the pension plans, those ones will be in the individual's names. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now you talked about uh, saving for retirement, which you said was so key. Uh, uh, shed some light on that. How important is it and how should couples uh, go about doing that? They always say that the best time to think about your retirement is before your boss does. All right. When somebody is just beginning their, their career, maybe they're in their 20s, Retirement looks like a million years it away. It does. <laughs> but unfortunately, the future has a, a way of arriving much faster than you expect. The years just go and you find yourself, ah, I'm being retired. Um, no matter how much you enjoy your work or how good you are at your work, sooner or later you, you may have to stop working, maybe for maybe company policy or the employer's policy or maybe your health. But at some point, you may find that you're not, no longer able
to, to work and to produce an income. So at that time, you will need income from passive sources. And that is what now retirement money is meant to be. And it is a lot of money that you need because most people need between 70 to 80 percent of their pre-retirement income in order to maintain the same standard of living. Right. And it's a lot of money. Some expenses will go down definitely during retirement because probably by the time you retire, you'll probably have educated your children, probably finished paying your mortgage. So those expenses will go down. But others increase. As people age, they tend to, to have health issues. And then the unfortunate thing is most health insurance companies do not want to see an old person. <laughs> It's it's um, it's ironical that when you're in the twenties, they're they're busy, they're busy taking your money all those right. years. <laughs> yeah. When you really need it, they don't want to see it. Right. <laughs> Let, let's just come back to that in a minute. Sorry to cut you off. We have a caller on the line. Uh, let's hear what they have to say. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Uh, my name is Rose. Okay. Go ahead. No, I need um, just a to be clear no, on My no. boyfriend and I we both attend school. And uh, we've been planning to buy a house now. We've actually identified a property. But at times we find we are really stretching ourselves thin. And I just wanted some direction on the, from the consultant. If it's wise for one to finish one thing before you start something else. Could you, or could you, you can uh, sorry, to, uh, Rose, could you speak up a bit, please? I'm saying uh, my boyfriend and I, we both attend school. Right. Uh, to be on at the USIU, and the fees are a bit up, and we've recently identified a property we both like to invest in. And at times we do find ourselves stretching ourselves really thin. And if there's a way, uh, somebody can get a one-on-one -on -one consultancy with a consultant there, uh, so as to be able to know how to do your financing properly, because I know if we were to say to somebody for advice, if somebody was to give us advice, we would actually be able to meet all those costs. But at times we find ourselves spending money here and there, and at the end of the day, we find ourselves really stretched thin. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, a, a valid point there, I suppose. Um, should, should couples seek expert advice? And if so, how can they go about doing this? It is helpful for people to, to, to seek advice from a qualified personal finance consultant. And the reason for that is that this person who is qualified has studied and is able to look at these things objectively and um, they, they can give you advice which will help you actually move your agenda forward. Um, unfortunately, you, you have to be, one has to be careful because there are lots of uh, people out there calling themselves financial advisors. You see, financial advisor is not something like a, a title like a doctor. You know, to call yourself a doctor, you have to have gone through a certain education, but there is nothing to stop anybody from calling themselves a financial advisor. Yes. So you really have to be sure that this person is qualified, and the only way to do that is to make sure that they belong to a professional uh, organization and they have undergone some kind of training. Now, once you see a person like that, and they're not very many in Kenya, actually. Um, well, if you see a person like that, you will be, he should be able to help you. And uh, you, be, you may be surprised at the kind of places you'll be able to, to save money. Uh, places like taxes. A lot of people complain that they pay too much tax, and yet there are ways in which they could reduce those taxes. In fact, even like when trying to buy the house, there are ways you could reduce it, your taxes and still make sure that you're buying that house or buying a property. Um, so. Fina uh, f professional financial advice is a good way to go. But watch out, of course. You have to be careful. Right, okay. Uh, going back to now uh, saving for retirement, we were talking about that. And you were talking about um, it getting to a stage where it gets a bit tricky. Do continue. Yes. Um, if you don't prepare yourself well so that uh, by the time you're older, and then when uh, those insurance companies don't want to see you, you'll find that those medical bills will start to mount and it is very easy for, for those medical bills to wipe you out so you need to be prepared. So the, basically what you need to do is first of all make sure that you're maximizing on your registered retirement plan. By maximizing on that, that means contributing the maximum allowed by law, which is 20,000 shillings per month, if you're able, 
or the maximum that you're able to. The more you contribute to a pension plan, the less income tax you pay. Not only that, by the time you retire, your pension will be bigger. Uh, so that's the first step. Then after that, invest in uh, investments which eventually will end up giving subsidizing or or um, yeah subsidizing the, the the pension adding up to whatever you're getting from the pension because the pension like i said earlier may not be enough to to see you through uh, and this should be started as early as possible you see when you start early the power of compound growth makes your uh, investments grow and they grow at uh, the earlier you start the the higher they grow right. so if you if you did if you if you if you don't do this early, you'll find that to save the same amount of money, you need to save a lot more. And it's probably very difficult because by the time people start thinking about retirement, most of them are in their for late 40s, mm -hmm. and that time, it all usually coincides with the time when the children begin to go to college. Right. So you've got these two big things, and uh, now you're wondering which one to, to, to do. The, to avoid that, start early. Start early. Yes. Okay, that's key. Now, uh, how does one or couples treat a uh, personal debt that has fall, uh, that has fallen through uh, into the relationship for example say uh, wedding paying off wedding or honeymoon <laughs> <laughs> debts how, how do they deal with that first of all I said that when you're getting into a relationship all the cards must be on the table right. the jokers <laughs> include, and that's one of the things I meant the jokers are those debts which uh, some of them may be uh, maybe big and maybe hidden maybe the person doesn't want to tell you about it and then you find now you're together and there's this big debt or big commitment which is which is now eating up on your family units um, resources F uh, first of all those wedding debts avoid them at all costs if you can if you can <laughs> actually you can how <laughs> <laughs> by doing a wedding you can afford right <laughs> <laughs> saving for saving up for it um, the reason I say this is because a wedding, I know a lot of people will not be very happy about this, but a wedding is actually an expense. It's, you're not investing in anything. You're, it's, it's a lifestyle thing. And um, to borrow money to put money on that, to, put, to start off your family in debt because of something which will be consumed in one day, it's uh, really not very wise planning. It's not really a wise way to start off your family. Right. So if you can, avoid that. The, the other debts, like I said, they should, be, they should have been discussed before you got into the, the marriage. And then now you can decide how we're going to handle this. Are we going to take it as our, pass, as our family debt now? Similar, similarly, your assets. If one person walks into, into a relationship with assets, are we going to take these assets as a family assets? All those things should be discussed. That's why I said at the beginning that everything should be discussed openly, and then we move on from there. Now, if you find that these things were not discussed openly and uh, now that brings in another dimension right i was just coming to that now uh if it gets to a stage where you want to go your separate ways after years or months say for example what happens now that actually steps into a realm which is outside personal finances and uh, because now this is a becomes a legal issue you start getting to divorce proceedings and uh, the courts will determine how it will be, will be separated. But let me just tell you this. Usually when you walk into a relationship with an exit strategy, the exit usually happens. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Um, not to say that, uh, that you, should be, you should stay in a, in a bad relationship, but you should know that uh, um, Family finances are usually devastated by, by breakups. Nobody wins. Actually, there's one situation, maybe the lawyers win, but nobody else. Right, yeah. okay. And uh, what, what then happens? Who, who are you to consult uh, in situations like that? Is it lawyers, bankers? Who is it? You would need to see a divorce lawyer. Then uh, they would, they would uh, be able to. And it's you. all on them. They deal with it. <laughs> well, the courts. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, on that note, uh, let's hope you know it, it doesn't get to that stage. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, for enlightening us on uh, financial planning for a family. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Well, in studio with me, I've had Mr. Maniara Kirago, a personal finance uh, consultant. We've been talking about planning for families. And now we move on to other news. And for close to a month, as vigilante groups ran riot in Central Pop Province, the government sat back quietly and only reacted after a revenge attack by Mungiki. Now, what followed was a loud condemnation of inter of the internal security minister. Now, did the state back the vigilante groups despite the police having long declared them illegal? Robert Nagila explores that scenario on Citizens on Patrol. 